Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. Today we're going to be seeing a match actually involving me, because we haven't seen that in a while. I actually been playing this game a lot recently, but decided to play a game with God the other day, so check that out. So, Shadow Fury is starting out in the bottom left corner. As usual, I will be referring to myself in the game in the third person. And God is in the top right corner. God going for CISO, which means he will be playing Grekum, and Shadow Fury going for Vekir. Shadow Fury doesn't race change very much, so that's likely to stay the same. Anyway, Shadow Fury very quickly going out scouting with Tethbeer, Shinbeer, while God setting up his economy with. Was it two? Oh, looked like he was getting one RP on QP and one on LC. Where, and Shadow Fury is doing exactly that, getting one on each, getting a very quick foundation for what looks like a very quick depot rush. And God building up a couple LC RPs. But of course, he probably will be race switching to Grekim. He always does this. Go with CISO first, then Grekim. But he does appear to have at least some amount of commitment to being CISO. I'm a little bit curious exactly why he does it. I'm not sure if it's a deception tactic in case he gets scouted, or if it's because he might actually decide to just go with CISO the entire time. A deception tactic would make a lot of sense though. Akron's about deception tactics. Makes perfect sense. Anyway, God now going back and it looks like he's gonna be changing to Grekum at this point. Or nope. Not changing yet. Anyway, Shadow Fury is continuing to build up, getting a very quick Zion Pulsar. Doesn't have skip teleport yet, but probably will. And staying with the two RPs. So this is just a Zion Pulsar built off of the Zion Veer. We don't see any other Zion Veer around here. And God's inventory are also scouting out. The Teth Veer and I think I saw one marine. Yeah, there's a marine over on this ridge as well. Completely missing each other, and the marines to the south completely missing the Shinveer on the ridge. So, both players completely avoiding each other's opening scouting forces. Anyway, God, further in the back in the past, has switched to Grekum. So, he's getting himself set up there, getting his Faro up, getting his RPs up pretty soon. While Shadow Fury getting Skip Teleport in this on here, and also getting attacked further in the past, or actually further in the future. Seeing the special ops coming in, probably not going to worry too much about that though. Anyway, God about three minutes down from there, getting opening octos, getting actually. Is he moving forward for a proc? I think he's moving for a proxy. Looks like he's very quickly going for a proxy. Whereas further in the future, just double checking the attack, seeing what Shadow Fury has, and Shadow Fury of course going for Vekir and doing the standard start. But I think he does see the depot, so he knows that something is up. Actually, he might be just out of range. He might not see it. No, he does now. Okay, he would definitely have seen it. So he's going to be aware that there is a depot coming, that there is going to be very quick Zion Pulsers. And as of course, for the future we see that the Zion Pulser is actually dealing quite a bit of damage, but getting itself killed, not doing well, choosing its target, Seppi of course not being a high priority target. Moving forward to the back, and now starting with a Faro, so it should be able to get rid of the Faro quickly enough to not die. And no, indeed it actually does still die, the Seppi, however, going down to the Zion Veer, God, for about three minutes down from here, Looks like he is planning to change that, and Shadow Fury following with him, double checking to see what's going on further in the past. And this is back when Shadow Fury building up this depot here, so. Right now, actually, it looks like Shadow Fury is not going for. Actually, it looks like he's slightly messed up, because there's 7 QP. Oh, this is the observer, sorry, this is in the present. So Shadow Fury actually looks like he is not planning on using the Zion Veer at the depot. But we'll see shortly, depending on if he builds up here. And no, the Zion Veer is not actually being turned into a Zion Pulsar. So God, on the other hand, looks like... Actually, double checking from Shadow's point of view. No, there is no proxy. So God aborted that proxy plan that he had with the Sepian Faro. But he st is still going for his economy in here. Which is kind of risky, actually. I mean, he has some time to build up and keep going. and He is bookmarking this point, but... It's definitely rather risky since if he doesn't build an Octopod very soon, which he could, but he has to. Otherwise, he's going to just get creamed by a Zion Pulsar once it comes up. And Shadow Fury is going for a later Zion Pulsar, just building or keeping a Zion Beer here to continue building economy, not going as all in, but very quickly getting Skip Teleport on the Zion Pulsar. And also forgetting how many Liquid Crystal a resource processor costs. And God, on the other hand, just not really doing too much. He's hanging out. Probably double checking, finding the right time for building up his Octopod, waiting for it to be done, and then building the Octopod. There we go, there's that Octopod. Just didn't have enough resources for it. 
Well, Shadow Fury is setting up his Zion Pulsar, but this is after God, so God will have his Octopod here to counter it. So this Zion Pulsar really is not going to last very long or do very much. It's, like I said, back to God's point of view, about a minute down from here, there's a Reef coming up, there's an Octopod coming up, and the Octopod looks to be going on patrol. So that Zion Pulsar cannot really do anything at this point. As for Shadow Fury at this point, he is not changing too much. Not really doing too much else from what he's doing right now. This Zion Pulsar is still the only damage he thinks is dealing, but now... Bit too late, seeing that it's coming up. There's still time to go back, though. And God, back at the unplayable past edge, is focusing on this. Well, Shadow Fury looks like he is going to be... He is changing up how he's attacking. But this Octobot is still a bit of a threat. So God, from his point of view, we see he is getting attacked, but this Reef is having to heal up, losing about a quarter of his energy so far, just healing up this resource processor. Shadow Fury looks like he's probably trying... planning to drain the Reef of energy by just knocking on this resource processor that's not super high priority for damage, but it's still forcing the Reef to use his energy to heal. Actually, the Reef halfway down to the 331 mark, and the Zion Pulsar looks to be not coming in at all. Shadow Fury back further up. No, he looks to be just trying to keep this expansion from being built on, and know that none of the expansions have been built on yet for God. Shadow Fury, on the other hand, building another Zion Veer, so he looks to be ready to ex either expand or just use that as cheap vehicle base, but probably going to expand, and... Yeah, one of the Zion Gear going over to the northwest corner of the map. So, Shadow Fury looks to be setting up a hidden base while God focusing heavily on his main base, setting that up. While sending an Octobot out, looks like he's trying to harass out, see if there's anything over in the bottom left corner of the map. And there isn't. This expansion, as I mentioned before, isn't quite as useful in Cataclysm Ridge as it is in Hills. Which actually, come to think of it, may have called this map. This is Cataclysm Ridge version 1.0, not Hills version 1.7. But Cataclysm Ridge 1.0 is basically Hills 1.8. I just think the name is more suited to a map. Hills is way too generic. So Octo is... An Octo actually going forward. So God, going for a sm small attack, small harassment. But he doesn't seem to be too focused on it. Actually, no, the Octo he is focused on it. The Octo just getting intercepted by the Zion Pulsar at the natural expansion and the Shin Veer. And getting destroyed. This is right into the playable past edge. There isn't a whole lot God can do about it. While Shadow Fury has teleported the Zion Pulsar over to the top and... Taking out the Progen forces, building in another Zion Pulsar. So right now, God is kind of on the back foot. But it's hard to say, because he is still playing in the unplayable past. However, it looks like he's about to lose an Octopod. And the Octopod not able to really kill anything, although it looks like it might have been blocked by the crate. Actually, if I recall correctly, yeah, God just points out, Hey, wait a sec, why is the Octopod not attacking the Shindir? Yeah, that, that's that been fixed. Don't worry about that. That's Next version has that fixed, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, now, as we can see, Shadow Fury just scouting around, not really focusing too much on committing to a harassment there. Although, from his point of view, he is committing to a harassment, but it's probably not going to work out very well. Still managing to get rid of some of this stuff here, and God, back about a minute down from there, right as the Zion Pulse will be teleporting in. Octopod, actually, still out of position, but right now it doesn't really matter. The Octopod, in perfect position, now the Zion Pulsar teleporting, and there's not much Shadow Fury is going to be able to do about this, being that this is right next to the Unplayable Past Edge. It doesn't look like Shadow Fury is aware of this. Still folks, about 30 seconds up from where God is. So God managing to fend off the Zion Pulsar. Zion, Shadow Fury actually noticing this, but it's too late for him to try to save it, unless... He might just be able to... No, he is just able to save it. Getting it out of there. And to the depot to save it and actually keep it alive. With a second Zion Pulsar here to pick up the slack. Getting its own skip teleport. Other than that, though, neither player has actually really expanded much since... Actually, no, God has been expanding quite a bit. He's been building a lot of resources while being assaulted, while Shadow Fury hasn't been doing the same. He hasn't been making as much money, actually. It looks like, yeah, this having that on QP the entire time was probably a bad idea. That was a bit of a waste. Now, there's Zion Pulsar coming up to try to continue to harass this base here that God has. And... God continuing to build up his economy, not really worried too much about Zion Pulsars. Given that Octopods do a really good job dealing with Zion Pulsars, I'm not surprised. Because I mean, Zion Pulsars have to work uphill to deal with Octopods. And to deal with anything. I mean, Vector kind of has to work uphill to deal with Grekum in general. Because really want them to get chronoporting, and they have much more effective cheap units. I mean, Vector infantry really isn't especially effective at just attacking anything, whereas Grecan base class units are actually decently effective, it turns out. And Shadow Fury's point of view, getting a couple Zion Pulses up here with a third one in the base, 
And this would work really nicely if it was out in front dealing damage, but it isn't. That is unfortunate, because God, about five seconds down from here, does, does lose his Octopod, but he's probably going to change this up to avoid the problem. And he has a second Octopod as well, so he needs to just use both Octopods to deal with the Zion Pulsers. And that would basically be it. This resource processor is taking some damage, and God is losing some resources, but he's still well ahead of Shadow Fury. And Shadow Fury has to be very focused on harassment, and he might be a bit too focused on it at this point. Not focused at all on economy, this, this here has not been built up at all, and... Actually managing to deal some actually managing to deal meaningful damage. He did manage to take out one RP. Looks like two RPs are gonna be taken out. God not able to respond to this effectively. He has one of his octopods going for a counterattack, but this is at least one of the RPs will go down, even with God changing the timeline, falling to the unplayable past. And this is a bit too early for Chrono Corning, so I think that is going to actually be meaningful. But it's hard to tell, it looks like that, actually there might have been an echo. No, there is an echo change here. The blue time of is carrying a change, so Shadow Fury not actually dealing as much damage as he expects to be dealing, but probably still dealing some damage to these RPs. Oh, no, actually, no, it looks like, ultimately, no, no damage is actually being dealt. Oh, that is unfortunate. Some slight delay for having the RP close up, but otherwise, no actual damage being dealt here. So, yeah, ultimately, Shadow Fury not being able to take care of this god, managing to echo in, well, not echo in, but I mean, have a delayed propagation on this Octopod coming in to defend. That was tricky. That was really tricky and annoying. So, God losing one Octopod in the process though, but still, that does not make cost for the Zion Pulsers. But a third Zion Pulsar coming in, trying to take care of this progenerating group, and the Reef out of energy! So, at this point, Shadowfury can just do anything he wants in the base, provided that he doesn't get intercepted, which likely will happen, being that he's now down again on Zion Pulsers having lost a couple in God's base. And building a bit more in the northwest, so Shadow Fury's main base now, or his economy split up between two bases, but I don't think God is aware of the hidden base. And God just continuing to keep his main base as his main focus, which for Grekum is not a bad idea, even though his reef is out of energy. It is still slowly healing up this Faro. And getting advanced structures, so very quickly getting advanced structures, and he definitely has enough money to get chrono porting, so it looks like he's been saving for this the entire game and just trying to avoid spending money as much as possible while Shadow Fury's been harassing him this entire time. To really no avail, I mean, right now we see further in the future Shadow Fury is doing some harassment, but it's likely not to do anything. Hitting the Seppi, which is somewhat effective, but like I said, likely not to actually do anything. God, and the 954 mark, building up another reef, and very likely just send an Octopod up there to deal with the Zion Pulsers. And the second reef is coming up, the Zion Pulsar avoiding it, and this is actually terrible timing. The Reef will come up and we'll be able to heal everything. It is only one Reef, but it's still a Reef. However, the Zion Pulse is dealing damage to this RP, but not able to destroy it. One of them being destroyed in turn, and the other one almost managing to take care of this Reef, but, or RP, but it looks like the RP will be healed up quickly enough, and Shadow Fury is probably going to get out of there before being able to deal any meaningful damage. Yes, and losing the Spotter on the Octopod, that is unfortunate. So not able to actually deal any meaningful damage, so this is happening the entire game, it's a bit of a theme in the entire game, is God just able to barely defend with these Octopods. And Shadow Fury actually looks like he's being a bit too timid in terms of how he uses his vehicles. I mean, it's important to save your vehicles as Grek as Vekir, sorry. You really want to make sure they don't die. That's extremely important. But at the same time, you... Actually, looks like, wow, the Progen... No, the Progen group's been destroyed! Although chronoporting is being built, so this is likely to be undone. God is likely to go back and fix this and make sure that it isn't ultimately a problem. But still, that's... That is... Kind of unfortunate. So, Shadow Fury is basically not able to deal anything. Not really able to do anything permanently to God this entire game. So, all this harassment has been a total waste. He's building up an aerial control center now. Just getting enough economy... Well, it's not even enough economy yet, but... Sort of prepping up in case he does. And getting a Zion Tercher, which... Might work, but I'm actually kind of becoming skeptical of Zion Turchers myself because... Well, because of this game, we'll see in a second. But basically, any detection, and they don't stand up that long. And the thing is, with chronoporting, detection is basically... As long as you build a fire within the next three minutes, you're good. And as we can see, God is rebuilding with his Arcticus from the looks of it, but... He's likely to be chronoporting right now to send his Octopod back and deal with this, though he isn't. Surprisingly enough, I'm not sure why I don't see that. Anyway... Shadow Fury getting some harassment. It looks like some permanent damage might maybe be dealt, but probably not. It's too far 
away from the pillow pass. And there we go. God is Chrono pointing back. Before... Yes, before this Progen Triad was destroyed, so actually we will be able to defend against this. Or he will be able to. And Shadow Fury checking this out, but... Ultimately escaping with a Zion Pulsar in time regardless. The Zion Church will be coming in to try to help out and deal with this, but still... This isn't working especially well. It looks like God is trying to permaclone as well. Sending his Octopods back and getting that whole permaclone undo trick going on. On the other hand, he's doing it further in the future, so he might be actually, or further away from the Impalable Pass, so he might be getting careless with that. Or he might be just waiting until he gets further back and then undo it when he has more Chrono Energy. Which would also make sense. So I expect he's going to go back to the Impalable Pass periodically to undo these Chrono Ports. And Zion Tercher ultimately managed to get rid of that, well, one of the Octopods, but the arrival still occurred, so it's kind of tell us it's going to go. This is getting... We are getting very much into Paradox Country right now, or at least into Unpredictability Country. Definitely chaos. Lots and lots of chaos. But God apparently has managed to avoid getting hit by anything, and Shadow Fury just not really attacking with anything. Either being destroyed or just being retreated. But further in the future, Shadow Fury thinks he's dealing damage, at least. Further the 1441 mark, we see he's dealing some damage with that. He is getting a foundation as well, but... Not actually getting anything beyond that. No real economy. Getting Shin Turcher, but... Hmm. I mean, the thing is, it's easy to be paranoid both because it's God, and God is a really good player, and also because it's Grekim, and Grekim just has a tendency to just sort of do anything, and do everything. I mean, not just with Chrono Porting, but it's... It's particularly with Chrono Porting. When they get Chrono Porting, they have... Obviously, the ability to just put a unit anywhere they want, anywhere in the next three minutes, and then it'll be where it wants. It'll be when you are. So that just ends up ruining everything. And as well, if you're not careful, I mean, they just set up triads. Well, actually, okay, anyone can proxy pretty easily, so that's not a big deal. But the fact that they avoid the the reef healing is pretty powerful. But even then, that's been nerfed. So really, it is the Chrono Porting. Sorry, I should... Yeah, I should correct that. Really, the Chrono Porting is the big deal. But when they get permacloning going on like this, then it's just insane. I mean, every one of these Octopods is just one Octopod. Having been Chrono Ported back, and then having that Chrono Port undone, so it gets permacloned. So it looks like he's only managed to do it with a couple. He's only gotten three or four permaclones at this point, but still, that's all free units. So he's getting a lot of money in the bank, so he could build new units if he wants to, or... or not. It doesn't really have to. At this point, the resources aren't even a concern. At this point, Shadow Fury would basically have to beat him three or four times over by just a sheer attack. And even then, it might not work. So at this point, Shadow Fury is basically fighting a losing battle, which is kind of unfortunate. One of the things I do not like about permacloning being this trivial to do is that you just get this losing battle situation. I mean, if Shadow Fury kills off all these Octopods, then God can just go further in the future chronoport them back, and this is he's permacloning them, their deaths back then won't matter, since they'll be permacloned past their own death, and they'll still stay alive. And you just keep doing that, and keep saving them that way. And so, basically, Shadow Fury has to attack at several points in time. And even then, it might not work. Even then, there'll still be a way to save it. And here we go, that Zion Turcher is going down very quickly, and managing to kill off one of the Octopods, but like I said before, that doesn't really matter. Possibly destroying everything but the Octopods might work, but even then, everything can still chronoport. There isn't any building that's going to cause chronoporting to no longer work. There used to be. Mound used to do this, but it's no, it hasn't been a thing that does, I think, since one of the beta versions, actually. But yeah, in the beta, the Mound used to... Alpha beta, the Mound used to be required in order for chronoporting to work, but that's no longer the case, which means there isn't anything that Shadow Fury can just destroy to stop God from permacloning like mad. So God can just permaclone like mad and avoid any consequences for units dying if he's really clever about it, which he probably will be. Anyway, from God's point of view, not actually doing a lot of chronoporting, focusing more on conventional recon... Yeah, he's focusing more on conventional reconstruction, getting Faro and Octo up and probably getting a Sepia up fairly soon, and then likely to go from there to get a Spire and just go back to his normal tech. While, of course, setting up some units to attack at the bottom left corner. So he is prepping for an assault. Probably going to be chronoporting these units back a few times before attacking Shadow Fury's base, ultimately. So that wouldn't be a terrible time for Shadow Fury to try to counterattack. But since Shadow Fury is more focused on dealing with God's base completely, it's kind of hard to have that work out. And Shadow Fury as well, getting his hidden base 
getting a lot of money, and actually Shadow Fury might, at this timing, have a chance, but it's still kind of unlikely. God has a lot of money in the bank, he has perma he has permaclone units, he has corona porting, he has enough units to defend his main base effectively, and like I said, they're functionally immortal, since they can just corona port back if they die, and be permacloned again, keeping themselves alive. Not that they actually have to, though, because Octopus do very well against Zion Pulsers, and... Zion Churchers, and against Grant, and of course, air being the cost it is, it's actually rather difficult. Something to think about, actually. I mean, in large numbers, like, five or six Zion Pulsers can take out an equal number of Octopods. But, two versus two, the Octopods will win. And really, the only advantage the Zion Pulsers have is splash damage. The amount of damage dealt is actually pretty comparable between the two of them. Like, Octopods dealing... Yeah, 56 damage for 5 seconds to ground, compared to Zion Pulsar's 62. So yeah, they pretty much deal the same amount of damage, but Octopods have almost... have one and a half times as much health. Like, 300 versus 190. So really, there isn't a lot that Zion Pulsars can do without the numbers to make the splash damage actually pan out. Shin Turchers, on the other hand, do have some benefits against this, but... Of course, at this stage, we have Aspire coming up, then of course, Sepibods will be coming up, and from there, the Shin Turchers will basically not be able to do too much. Tet Searchers could also be an option, but they're kind of expensive and not particularly effective against ground. So at this stage, and even then, the Shin Church is not killing Octopod that quickly. So at this stage, it's rather difficult for Shadow Fury to do anything. Having lost his vehicles earlier on, it's very difficult for Vector to rebuild vehicles just because it's difficult to get set up at all. But when you lose vehicles, that's a lot of money sunk. Whereas, like I said, Grekum can just build a lot of base class units and be done with it, but Back your infantry don't do a whole lot. They really aren't as generally effective. And here we go, the, the Sepipod coming to the Shin Turcher and getting rid of it. I think Shadow Fury is probably going to go and retreat this completely. And he's definitely trying, definitely moving it away, but he has avoided it. So the Sepipod getting distracted by the Se Zion Pulsar, keeping the Shin Turcher alive, but ultimately not doing too much damage, just killing a couple base class units that can be easily rebuilt. Not a big deal. God has so much money in the bank that it does not matter at all. I'm actually kind of surprised how well he was able to defend and get his economy going at the same time from economic harassment. And that's kind of embarrassing, really. I mean, the whole point of that was to destroy his economy, and it basically caused his economy to grow while Shadow Fury did nothing, because Shadow Fury... Well, if he's let up for a second, he would just get attacked from stuff in the future. So, might have been just playing it wrong, but really, that was nicely done by God, I suppose. Getting all that stuff set up and getting everything such that there's really no way around it. And God getting even larger an army now that he has the economy to support this. And of course, Chrono Porting as well, on top of that, that's going to be really difficult for Shadow Fury to deal with. And once again, Shadow Fury going for more harassment, but this at this stage in the game, it's way too late. Even now, it's really not going to help too much. The... Hidden base, however, doing a pretty effective job. The Sepibot almost found it, but avoiding it, not looking for it. And nothing of the obvious natural, so God either assumes that Shadow Fury is completely broke, or <clears throat> has expanded somewhere else completely, or has developed the main base. And not bad Zion Pulsar Micro. Getting rid of these resource processors, God doesn't need to worry about them, and he shouldn't be. He has enough money in the bank for it not to be a problem, and... Ted Searcher getting rid of the Sepipod, but fighting the Octopod, actually dealing quite a bit of damage to it, but will go down before getting rid of the Octopod. And there's really not much that can be done beyond that besides another Ted Searcher being built. So unfortunately, Shadow Fury really wasting a lot of his units, and he, Vekir cannot get away with wasting units. They need to save their units. You pretty much cannot have any units die, otherwise you're going to lose the game. I mean, if you have your units stay alive, then <clears throat> you can just hold them and then use your money to build resource processors. But... If they all die, it's... Yeah, Cronavern actually is pointing out that he's thinking Vector needs a higher... needs better economy at the start, because they're extremely focused on skip teleport survivability. Since skip teleport survival is actually really powerful, it's just that micromanagement does not work well. When you have Chrono Energy here that's restricting what you can do, micromanagement becomes rather difficult to have as a core way of keeping units alive. You have to micromanage to keep a unit alive. In most games, this is fine. I mean, it requires a bit more attention, but it's usually fine because by the time it comes up, we're talking about high-level play, and it's just a matter of how much attention you're going to be giving based on practice. 
But with Akron, your attention is restricted by the game itself. The amount of attention you can give is restricted by the game, which means you can't just... You, you can't just micromanage however you want. You actually have to be really careful how you spend your chrono energy. And that means if you... And of course, anything happens in the middle pass, you're done. So if you want to try to deal any meaningful damage, which involves some commitment, you're going to lose everything as Vekir. Unless you're really, unless you're lucky, basically, because you wouldn't be able to scout enough since your opponent is just going to be trying to trick you in terms of making you not see what they actually have. And now at this point, God, of course, going for a massive attack, so we can see. And Shadow Fury trying to defend against this, getting some Zion Pulsers, which will help, but of course, God could likely just chronoport this all back and be done with it. While at the same time, getting rid of that Zion Pulsar over in the top right corner of the map. Well, the Tet Searcher deals some damage, but really not enough. So God, not losing anything. I mean, he's losing his Octopod, of course, but he's probably going to go fear. He's over 24 minute mark, likely to be chronoporting st this stuff back, to deal that much more damage. And I mean, there's enough Zion Pulsars to get rid of this army. But there we go, there's that Chronoport. So God Chronoporting it back, and now what he has here is just going to be death for everything. I mean, the Tet Searcher, Tet Searcher doing what it can. But these resource processors are just getting destroyed. Regardless, these resource processors are unnecessary. God has so much money in the bank, he doesn't need them. Where Shadow Fury has been pretty much broke this entire game, both trying to rebuild vehicles, but also just trying to get his economy going in the first place. Mind you, probably wasn't the best idea to go for the early Zion Pulsar rush on... I mean, even Cataclysm Ridge being what it is, like Cataclysm Ridge and Hills both being what they are, being the small maps they are, it's not a terrible idea to open with this. As I mentioned before, economy on this map usually doesn't work out very well. It's kind of tricky to defend it so that it does. I mean, God was really tricky when it came to how he uses octopods and how he commanded his forces to avoid having them out of position, ultimately, and getting rid of Shadow Fury's forces. But overall, economy is typically a bad focus on this map. So it's kind of hard to say how that would work, but clearly it didn't work out here. And it looks like God did find the hidden base, ultimately, got rid of that. And Shadow Fury, it's just a matter of when he's going to throw in the towel now. I mean, as we can see, the Chrono Board Force is coming back here, dealing enough damage to get rid of all of this, getting rid of the economy since the economy in the Northwest was destroyed. There's really nothing Shadow Fury can do right now. And, yeah, at this point, wondering about the Permacolony, which really, there wasn't a lot of, but there was enough to defend the main base, and that was, that's all it took, really. And that main base defense allowed the harassment to, or caused the harassment to be completely useless both with and without permacloning, that it really wasn't effective at all. There's really no point. But yeah, that's pretty much the game. So I hope you enjoyed that. There will be another game shortly. And just wait until Shadow Fury just throws in the towel, which is likely to happen soon. And there we go. So that's the game. So I hope you enjoyed that. And we'll be back in just a minute with another game. So stay tuned.